And I know that you're listening to all that's going on here with rapt attention. Uh, the Amanda Todd situation has galvanized the nation when it comes to teen suicide. Uh, also, the fact that, you know, you're not only responding to this uh, appeal, but we're getting a lot of calls on the prayer lines. And uh, it, it's, it's such an indicator that there's such need out there. And when Ron announced yesterday that over 13,000 calls specifically to the Crossroads Center have been with regard to suicide, that's over the course of many years. Uh, you know, you realize that there's all kinds of desperate people who are just so um, alone, uh, so much in need. And when you support Crossroads Christian Communications, 100 Huntley Street, you're supporting a ministry that is 24 7 across the nation. How good is that? And it's, it's a place where people can find some refuge and some hope. Now, the uh, CEO of uh, Crossroads is Don Simmons. He has uh, uh, co authored this book, Why They Die Curing a Death Wish in Our Kids, uh, our offer for the month. And we know that many of you already are benefiting from reading this book. But, Don, in the introduction, you uh, talk about the perfect storm, and you have made a presentation in, in uh, a few months ago on, on 100 Huntley Street about it, but I think we need to just summarize it. But before we do that, I, I want to forget about the perfect storm for a minute. You have been a youth ministry specialist for many years, uh, both with the Canadian F uh, Federation of Baptists and also with Youth for Christ. Back in those days, could you have ever have, have foreseen that the day we're facing now would come upon us? Well, and first of all, you, you, the viewers should know that I'm a businessman, but, but our primary ministry interest has been with teenagers. Mm -hmm. So electronics business, teenagers, two of the most rapidly changing environments right. there are. And, you know, I think, I think what's important uh, to your point, Jim, is, is a number of the things we're talking about today are not new. Depression is not new. Suicide is not new. Uh, bullying teens is not new. Mm -hmm. um, however, there are some things around the culture that are fanning into flames some of those issues in ways that I don't, I don't think we could have ever expected. Uh, the fact, for example, that uh, most teen relationships now are dominated through technology or electronics, not not face-to-face -face human. Um, if someone was bullying before and they and they uh, had a fist fight, mm. closure would come. Yeah, usually with a black eye. And, and and you and actually interestingly enough, you, you know, someone would get involved usually, and yeah. someone would be taught about that. And uh, now, of course, all of that's hidden. You you have you have all kinds of things said. I, I'm sure we've all said something by email that we didn't mean and wish we hadn't said it. But when it's not face to face, uh, things are allowed to go in all kinds of directions. And and of course, we see hidden behind the veil of technology, uh, sort of how debased our culture can become. Uh, you know, I'm here at Crossroads because the media has such, such a grip on our culture. And it, it's, it's not right for us with a message of God's love to, in a sense, just let that be. And that's why we have to enter it. Yeah, so and, and this brings some real challenges because there has been a way of doing things. And it's been a very successful and very effective way of doing things in the past. And I'm not going to ask you, you know, to analyze Crossroads then and now, but in terms of the current crossroads challenges that you're facing, I um, mean, it's you who makes a decision about this emphasis, this focus on uh, teen suicide. Uh, it's something that's very close to you. And in fact, tomorrow we're gonna talk about an experience that you had because you're a coach of a hockey team in Uxbridge with one of your star players who took his own life. Uh, and so it's become a very personal thing for you. But when you look at the overall of Christian television ministry, uh, what are some of the shift points that you think are necessary coming out of this perfect storm idea? Well, and of course, you even just referred to Christian television right. ministry. And in my coming to Crossroads, I, I was trying to help us as a leadership team um, recognize that the distribution of media is not just television anymore. Right. It's been the dominant technology for some 40 years or so. And the last 10, maybe five years even, it's changed dramatically. In fact, I think I've said before in 2010, um, you know, Canadian families basically utilize the internet more now than they watch television. And of course, as the, uh, you know, that's, that happens in all age groups, of course, but especially for the young. 
And uh, we've talked uh, in, in a month or so ago about problems like sexting and areas that teens get into that, in, in a sense, as I said earlier, they're not new, but it's like a gasoline, you know, it's like pouring gasoline on a fire with this technology and the power that is held in the hands of a young person. And, and the information that can be accessed today, there's no limits. I'm concerned, if storm number four I talk about is the personalizing nature of technology and the fact that absent from most experiences now uh, are the types of controls and supervision and challenge that come from people that love a person and it's lonely. In fact, in fact, even the technology has encouraged uh, really a, a place to go. Even, even young people that are, in a sense, uh, depressed, they often spend their time uh, withdrawing, but into a world that isn't just a silent world, it's an active world that is giving them information that isn't accurate and, and feeding them lies and actually, I think, perpetuates the very problem we're dealing with this week. And the irony is that uh, as connected as young people are through uh, social networking, they've never felt more isolated. Exactly. And most youth experts agree that this is... Uh, this is an absolute growing problem. In fact, I'm not, I'm not sure yet, Jim. The, the uh, experts have, de have determined a way to, yeah. to catch up with, yeah. you know, the rampant nature of relationships that are hidden behind the veil of technology. You know, perhaps one day historians will look back on this era as a time of naivety on the part of our, our culture generally. You know, the Amanda Todd story is, is so gripping and so tragic, but how many young people like her have um, foolishly or you know innocently or naively uh, done or said something on the internet without knowledge of the fact that essentially they're broadcasting to the world and they're making themselves vulnerable to those creepy predators out there who are looking for any opportunity I, I uh, was reading uh, just yesterday about something called the dark net have you heard about that yet the dark net mm -hmm. it's uh, you know there's 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 a, there's a level of evil going on uh, in a subterranean kind of way using internet tech Te technology that is just absolutely creepy and uh, you, you really are beginning to see kind of a, uh, a manifestation of, uh, of evil, uh, the like of which I'm not sure any of our youth cultures in the past have ever had to face. And we'll talk tomorrow about it, Jim, uh, in terms of my experience with Dylan. Yeah. But you know, as a hockey coach in a fairly small community in Canada, our, our motto was to win at hockey and win at life. And to, so to, to imagine one of my players, actually a, a very bright, very intelligent young man, um, who we, you know, when you're in the hockey dressing room with hockey players, as you know, it's intimate. You mm. get to know them, and, and I think I think this is what shocked a lot of us is is that a, a person with so much potential, so on track in many ways, could get caught up, and that's that's part of why I've contributed to the book and. You're right, this, this uh, topic, it's a growing problem. And it's not just a problem that's relegated to various uh, social spheres. And if we don't do something about it, uh, we're gonna lose a lot of people, a lot of kids. Now, uh, friends, you, you, you know, you're watching this uh, special emphasis, these uh, last yesterday and today and for the rest of this week and then next week. And you're wondering, well, what difference does it make if I make a contribution or not to Crossroads? What is Crossroads doing about this? Well, number one, Crossroads is raising awareness. And awareness is a vital player in, in finding a solution for any issue that is confronting uh, a culture. Raising awareness, but also providing uh, solid, gripping, intelligent, well-researched material like this book. Uh, let's put it up on the screen again. It's called Why They Die, Curing the Death Wish in Our Kids, written by Jerry Johnson and uh, also co-authored by uh, Don Simmons. It's a book that uh, is so informational. Every church library should have one. Every pastor should have one. Uh, any uh, one working with young people should have one. Uh, every teacher should have one. Uh, it's, that's another proactive thing Crosses are trying to do. But also just providing that opportunity for those of you who are going through a real crisis right now to be able to call you know, to a, f a phone center that is 24 seven ready and willing to listen and pray with you. How do you beat that? Uh, in fact, Don, I'm sure it's gotta be really encouraging to you, know, you to know that the prayer lines are really doing the job. You know, coming to Crossroads, it was one of the most 
one of the most bless, blessed things I learned is this prayer engine <clears throat> that can engage with people that are watching and engaging with us on the media and presents that human response, which uh, incredible ministry. Yeah, it's not a machine. It's, it's a real human being who responds to you, friends, and that's, uh, that's what's, uh, what this is all about. The Pledge Lines, don't forget, one 888 3